Welcome to the Orvis Guide to Fly Fishing. I'm your host, Tom Rosenbauer. One of my favorite kinds of fishing is for migratory species like salmon and steelhead. They're big, they're strong, and they jump a lot. They're also mysterious because they migrate. They're incredibly fun to catch with a fly rod. In this episode, we'll cover the basics of salmon and steelhead fishing, giving you the essential tools to get you started. Yes! Yeah, baby! <laughs> This is the way you cast. This show has been brought to you by Orvis Rod and Tackle. Ontario, yours to discover. Ontario's Algoma region, where Huron and Superior meet. Anglers have enjoyed catching salmon and steelhead since Europeans first came to North America. Whether on the east coast or west, there were huge runs of migratory species to catch. They're known as migratory species because they live in oceans or large lakes but return to rivers to spawn. Salmon and steelhead are anadromous. They're born in fresh water, migrate to the ocean, and then return to fresh water to reproduce. This is different than trout and rivers, which are year-round residents, where salmon and steelhead only migrate through a river system to reach spawning grounds. It's generally during this migration period that we fish for them. In the Atlantic, the principal species is the Atlantic salmon, which is caught in North America from Maine all the way north to rivers in Labrador. It's also found in many rivers in Northern Europe. Known as the king of game fish, Atlantic salmon are exceptionally popular because of their incredible strength and propensity for jumping or leaping when hooked, which is why their scientific name in Latin means the leaper. On the Pacific coast, the rivers from California all the way north to Alaska have five different species of salmon and steelhead available. Each species has a specific migration time depending on the location and time of year. The species of Pacific salmon that fly fishers target are Chinook, Coho, Pink, Chum, and Sockeye salmon. All require different presentation techniques and flies, but there are general methods of presentation that are common to all. More about that later in the show. Steelhead are essentially rainbow trout that live in salt water or in large lakes like the Great Lakes. They too migrate up rivers to spawn at different times of year. They are legendary fighters prized by anglers and exist in their native form in rivers from Southern California all the way to the Panhandle of Alaska. They've also been introduced to the Great Lakes system. That's a good fish. Much like Atlantic salmon, steelhead can be caught on dry flies at certain times of the year, which can make for some exceptionally fun surface fishing. In addition to steelhead, Pacific salmon have also been successfully introduced into the Great Lakes. You can swing flies for coho on rivers in Michigan and use nymphing techniques to catch steelhead in Pennsylvania. There have been different techniques that have evolved to help catch these migratory fish, but there are presentation methods common to all. Fish on! Oh, there's a fish! Yeah, nice! That's what she's all about, buddy. This is a true summer run, folks. These are the fish that dreams are made of right here. People wait for years to catch something like this. Big northern coho. He's tired. There he is. Nice. Mm. Nice fish. Wow. Nice uh, coho on the Skeena River in Terrace, British Columbia on the spay rod. Uh, and I'm on a uh, lamprey pattern. So we're just gonna let this guy go. Gonna go make some babies. Uh, there he goes. No harm done there. <laughs> right on, that's what it's all about. Let's even get another one. There you go. That's a coho. Yeah, he took it on the strip. So this is my first. 
Pacific salmon here on the Skeener River. Nice bright fish. Yeah, real bright. Oh, that was a dumb move. That was a dumb move. You got move. it on the egg sucking leech, eh? That's interesting, yeah. That, <laughs> I haven't seen that done before. This is very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I can't get it. Yeah, anything. that that is a technique that I have not seen done before. Oh, uh, this Tom. I have this special boy right in the corner of the mouth. Yep. I have this special technique. You wrap the line around the fish and it <laughs> confuses them. It's like See? well, it's called hog tying them, right? Eh? Yeah, yeah, and it's it's easier to get them in because it confuses them. They don't know where the pulls come <laughs> from and they just come right in. Oh, Piece nice, of cake. Nice fish, bud. Yeah, pretty fish. Yeah. Pretty bright fish. Sharp teeth. Yep. Well, there he is. Oh, what do you think of that, mister? Good, I'll release him. Okay. Here you go. All right. You got him? Yeah, got him. Yeah. Okay, buddy. Off you go. Ooh. That was fun. <laughs> right on, buddy. Thank you. Good one. Beautiful. <laughs> when salmon and steelhead enter a river to migrate to spawning grounds, they use structure similar to trout to hold in while making their pilgrimage. By reading the water and understanding the basics of river morphology, we can eliminate unproductive water and locate fish quickly. When we return, we'll examine in detail how to break down a river and locate fish. When salmon and steelhead come into fresh water to travel to their spawning grounds, they use much of the same structure and currents as trout. But there are some important and key places to look for migratory species, places you need to focus on. When salmon and steelhead move up a river, they're generally trying to move fairly quickly. Of course, they remember their youth and how in these rivers there are predators. Eagles and ospreys are constantly on the lookout for careless fish. So they're looking for structure and riffles to hide beneath, and of course, deep water channels. As anglers, we need to focus on locations where salmon and steelhead are likely to hold on the journey. These holding spots not only give them cover, but also a slight break from the current so they can rest. Key locations to look for them are current breaks where you see fallen trees, rocks and boulders, ledges, and drop-offs. Salmon and steelhead also love holding in seams. Seams are places where slow water and faster water meet. Another important place to look is at the heads of pools, just where a riffle or fast water begins, and also at the tail of the pool. Fish will hold at the head of the pool, getting ready to move through. At the tail of the pool, the fish are resting after already fighting through swift currents below. Both are excellent lies to swing a fly because they're high percentage locations. Both salmon and steelhead will likely use both in their migration. My favorite location to find fish is at the tail of a pool, where fish are usually funneled into a small area. For Atlantic salmon, this is often a great place to use a dry fly. The equipment used for salmon and steelhead can vary greatly. For smaller Atlantic salmon when fishing in northern Newfoundland, a 7 or 8 weight is ideal in a 9 foot rod. You might also want to use a 10 foot 7 weight to fish for steelhead on a Great Lakes tributary when you're using nymphing techniques. For big Chinook and Coho, you would definitely want a 9 or even a 10 weight to have the ability to effectively fight these big strong fish. For all species and conditions, you'll need a good quality reel with a solid drag. These fish are explosive and will test your drag system to the max. So it's critical to get a quality reel, especially a large arbor system, which will help you bring in line for fast running fish like Atlantic salmon and steelhead. If I had to pick one all round rod for application to both salmon and steelhead, I'd probably pick a 10 foot eight weight rod. However, it's important to match your rod size to the species and conditions. So I strongly recommend you check with the experts at your local fly shop or through our website at orvis.com. By getting the right rod, you'll ensure you can get the maximum enjoyment from your fishing time by having the right Whoa, tools. Another one.
Here in the Skeena River, we're using 13 and a half foot to 14 and a half foot spay rods for eight and nine weight lines. Now we could cast just as far with a single handed eight weight rod or a switch rod. We could handle these fish with those rods. The reason we're using a spay rod is because we've got these big heavy sink tips. We need to lift those line to the surface and be able to throw them out there. And you just can't do that with a switch rod or a single handed rod. At least you can't do it very easily. The traditional way of catching salmon and steelhead is by swinging a wet fly. By using different types of presentation methods, combined with specialized lines or flies, you can effectively work a run. We'll discuss these techniques later in the show. What you need to know first is how to work a run. If you don't know exactly where the fish are, then you have to systematically break it down. The best method for doing this is known as the two-step, two-cast. Basically, you make two casts, each one longer than the first, and then you take two steps downstream. By doing this, you'll effectively work over an entire area with your fly. Well, here we are on the Skeena River. We've put our time in today to get the, the fish that we've got, but when you get one, they're a quality fish. This is what it's all about right here. We're on a black intruder pattern, black and purple actually. And there it is right there. You can't get much better than that. There she goes. Nice. <laughs> I thought, I, you know, I thought maybe there'd be a coho in there. Yep. So I started stripping. Yeah, well, that's, that's where they'll sit on that inside slow stuff, eh? Hey, thanks. That's a nice fish. <laughs> nice fish. Good job. <laughs> Very bright. We're gonna let this guy go, and he's gonna go up river. He's gonna make some babies. Say goodbye, Tom. Goodbye, buddy. <laughs> right on. Good job, man. Thanks. That's magnificent. You're on fire. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. Instead of the instead of the swing that we're using for the steelhead, I'm getting the mending the line over into this froggy water and just stripping it like you would a trout streamer. Pretty fast too. They like, supposedly, like a very aggressive strip. How your fly is presented to the fish is critical. In fact, it's more important than the exact pattern you choose. The fly has to swing in the current at the right speed and depth in order to trigger a fish into striking. You know, it's all too easy to get hung up on fly patterns and your casting when you're fishing for salmon or steelhead. Those are fun things. But it's far more important to worry about your fly swing speed and the depth at which your fly is swinging. The fly has to be off the bottom but fairly close to the bottom, and it has to be swinging at kind of a slow walk kind of swing. So pay attention to those things when you're fishing for salmon and steelhead. So Gil, we've got this giant river here, the Skeena, how can we possibly catch a steelhead when there's so much water? Well, Tom, you got to break it down. You got to look for different uh, structure, like uh, you look for structure and you look for a funnel, a, a, a narrow point in the river, and then where they come up out of heavy, fast water and they need to slow down long enough and you can get a, a good swing. The, the water, the way I describe the flow of the water that you're looking for, it's a nice, flat, even, uh, tabletop surface almost with, with broken cobbly stones and it's flowing almost at a fast walk. Mm -hmm. Like if you can if you can visualize that and just see the speed of the water here as we, you know we look here you can see it that the inside is nice and soft mm -hmm. and, and, and you know ripply yeah. and if you go out any further it's actually pushing very very hard. So that's that's how we break it down. You need, to, you need to find the lane, Tom, in order to get into the fish consistently. These are migrating fish. They're not holding, they're not holding fish. They'll stop for a rest. They may stop for a break, but they're going to continue on in their migration to all the legendary tributaries of the Skeena River. Salmon and steelhead are very aggressive fish and they'll strike anything that gets in their way. 
This brightly colored spin and glow used on conventional rod is weighted to the bottom with a big heavy weight. It spins around in the current. The fish come by, they see it, and they grab it. This intruder fly does the same thing. This is what we use on a fly rod for salmon and steelhead. It's brightly colored, it's big, it's obnoxious, but we can't weight this to the bottom with a fly rod and wait for the fish to come by. We have to cast it out there on a sinking line and let that fly slide through in the current to get in front of the fish to make them strike. But the principle is the same. You got a brightly colored obnoxious thing that gets in their way that they're gonna strike. The flies you use for salmon and steelhead are often unique. Many of the patterns are impressionistic. They don't try to imitate a specific food source. That's because salmon and steelhead don't feed much once they come into fresh water on the journey to spawning grounds. Some of these patterns are quite beautiful and artistic, while others can be garish and wild. I'd recommend patterns to you, but there are just so many and they're so specific to species and location, there's just not enough time to address them all. Just do some basic research on what you need based on these criteria, and you'll find you get the patterns you need. The only exception to this rule is steelhead, especially in the Great Lakes region. They will eat on their spawning run and may pick up salmon eggs, other steelhead's eggs, nymphs, or even small bait fish. So egg patterns, nymphs and streamers, will work for these steelhead. To swing a fly, you typically cast downriver at approximately 45 degrees. You can change the speed the fly travels through the water by either mending upstream or downstream. But one of the things you want to make sure is that the fly line is never downstream of the fly. If the fly line is downstream of the fly, it pulls the fly at the fish and that's going to spook the fish and they're not going to take it. There are a lot of theories about why salmon and steelhead take a fly. They feed little, if any. When they come in from salt water into fresh water, they do take flies. So Gil, why do you think steelhead take flies? Steelhead take flies purely out of instinct. They snap at things as young juvenile smolts in back channels, small tr streams, creeks, tributaries to the skeena, mm -hmm. they, that, and that's purely out of survival. Mm -hmm. um, as they uh, progress and they get older, they still have to continue to feed. They move down to the ocean, uh, and as they're in the ocean, they, they're feeding on many different uh, creatures out there, and uh, as they come back uh, to their native rivers as adults, putting a fly in front of them is we're trying to re, uh, duplicate and replicate the things that they eat in the ocean, such as the lamprey pattern or the smolts or these dry flies. Some of these things, these different uh, patterns that we use, they are simulating a lot of the things that they've seen throughout their entire lives in all these creeks and streams mm -hmm. in the Skeena drainage. Okay, so it's memory and reflex. A lot of it, yeah, and they're a very aggressive fish. They're, they're a predator. and. Yeah, I'm, I believe that in most situations, um, if they're there, they'll bite. Spay casting is a very effective means of using a two-handed rod to fly fish for both salmon and steelhead. Its popularity continues to grow. I'm still new to spay casting and I love it, but to get expert advice, let's listen to Pete about some of the basic casts. With a dynamic roll cast, we need to lift this rod up, come back with a smooth acceleration, then a lift. We're trying to establish an anchor point about a rod's length away, right here. Once that line touches, we then can deliver that line out there. Think of it almost as splash and go. Let it touch, then send it on its way. If you wait too long, that line's gonna collapse. And it looks something like this. Come back, lift up, touch, and then go. Lift up, come back, lift, touch, then go. And that's the foundation for spay casting. One of the first casts we learn when spay casting to change directions is a single spay with a change of direction. That's simply just that dynamic roll, but we need to shift our body to reposition that line out across the water. Now, it sounds like the easiest cast when in fact it's probably one of the more difficult ones to accomplish. That timing has to be spot on when we create that cast. We're gonna lift that rod up, come towards the bank, then we're gonna dip down, lift it up, and then we can deliver that cast out and across. Kind of at a 45 when we're casting, or straight across. So again, we lift that rod up towards the bank, dip it down, come back, and then make that dynamic roll. 
We're just making that twist to set up for that dynamic roll. That's the foundation of this cast. The double spay is actually a little bit easier than the single spay. The reason is you have a little bit more time. Once you flop that line up there or upstream of you, you now have a little bit more time to set up for that dynamic roll cast. This is often a great cast to try first. With that double spay, I said it's easier. Notice how much time that I have. Once I make that flop, I then can wait as that line comes downstream towards me. Then once I'm ready, I can bring that rod around, set up for that dynamic roll, and then send that line out there. Snap T is a great substitute for that double spay. It's a little bit more dynamic, and it's a lot more fun to do, in my opinion. With that snap T, we're gonna lift the rod tip up downstream and then snap it underneath that line. We lift this rod tip up and then pop it underneath. That's gonna get our line to reposition upstream. We can then sweep our rod around and set up for that dynamic roll. The snap T's a lot of fun, and it's a great cast to learn. Fly fishing for migratory species like salmon and steelhead is a lot of fun. They often make their spawning runs up incredibly beautiful rivers on both coasts. And when hooked, they're spectacular and powerful fighters. Once you hooked a few of these fish, you'll quickly understand why I have such a passion for these magnificent game fish. To learn more about salmon and steelhead, please go to our learning center at orvis.com slash learn to fly fish. Thanks for joining us, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the water. This show has been brought to you by Orvis Rod and Tackle. Ontario, yours to discover. Ontario's Algoma region, where Huron and Superior meet.